formalities of exchanging cards. Mark Fucci, a little body hug for Jordan Speed Fucci, has been caddying for Justin Rose for over 10 years. They celebrated their decade together at the players earlier this year. Detailed study of the yardage books on the first, as if they didn't know. Of course, they were. Playing. I know it's amazing, but I must say, it's hard to believe. But they almost look like tinges of green coming through already after a very soft day till now, with a little drizzle and drizzle overnight, and all of a sudden the turf is starting to turn a little green. Well, I think what's what's happening, Hutchie, is where it was green, it is getting greener quite quickly. The brown will take longer to. Go green. It's not like the African bush where it can literally go green overnight. Okay. This is game number 45. On the tee from the USA, Jordan Spieth. He has a US Masters, he has a US Open, he has the Open. He's only second in the TGA, he's got a chance to win that in a few weeks' time. To complete the career Grand Slam. Going with Driver, now this is a really interesting choice. It's what Brooks Kepka did earlier in the day, missed it well right. Done the same thing. Well, that bunker there is 266 to reach, so flew it over the top of the bunker. He's going to have the ball well above his feet. Difficult second, although the pin today or the hole is cut in a more reasonable position. On the tee from England, Justin Rose. <laughs> Born in Johannesburg, moved to England, to Hampshire in the south of England at the age of five. Since 2004, has been playing on the PGA Tour, now resident in Albany, in the Bahamas, with a very nice house in Chelsea, too, where he and the family tend to come in the summer, possibly at Christmas time, too. A feeling as a hermit fan court, too. Near George. Looking to find the high ground on the left-hand side of the fairway. Doing it well. On the tee from Thailand, Hirade Ampi Banrad. Well, it must do. I do enjoy watching this man play. A real swashbuckler. Has a go, and yet to make the cut in the open. Could it be this year? waste any time. Oh, looks like a ripper. And he just caught the rough and uh, got the fine line. Nothing wrong. I've never called, heard him called Hirare before. I thought he was a decky or something, didn't he? Well, I think we'll stick with Kiridek. That's what he's always been as far as I'm aware. Hideki's the other, the other one. <laughs> but the armor hit it yet. Look at this first hole, that bunker is a set 266, I think it is to reach that one. Slightly up in the two bunkers guard in the front right, and then the one right on the green. And a couple of players, Chris Kepka drove it on here yesterday, and had about a 15 foot of an eagle too. Uh, nice pin position today, the hole cut. 28 places into the green, and 6 from the left. 8 from the left. Beath and Rose played together the first two rounds two years ago in the Open.
Well, that's the championship 18 holes. There are 54 holes here at Carnoustie. These are the first nine. It's a relatively gentle opening. Just a short par four to start with. They're going out roughly in the same direction. A much harder second hole, 461 yards. Par four. Third that John Rahm showed was drivable yesterday. I don't think it is today. Don't think anyone will be going for it. Dog leg right fourth, known as Hillocks. Fairly straightforward hole. And then Bray is number five. With an enormously long green. Big slope up to a high plateau at the back. Only just short of that today. Then Hogan's Alley, the first of the par fives. Long straight hole. Pretty hard to hit in two today. Even Kepka had to lay up. Seventh runs in the same direction, out of bounds all the way along the left hand side. Some birdie chances there. Lovely little par three eighth with out of bounds on the left. Tight to the left. It's only 183 yards it's playing today. And then the last hole on the way out, known as Railway. Going out to the railway line. 474 yard par four with some sneaky bunkering. Actually, you could say that on most holes here. The bunkering at Carnist is very clever. Oh, it's terrific. 112 of them out there waiting to catch you. Right, second shot into his first green for Abby Weinrad. So no nonsense way about going about things. And it's hit a really nice shot in here. A bit unlucky you checked up that quickly. You can see in the longer grass, the rough on the right, guarding that side of the green. You've you really got to play a very accurate shot, though not a very long one. This is Destin Rose. That's okay. Jordan Spieth comes here after a reasonably indifferent year. Certainly in recent times. Has had four top tens in 17 outings on the PGA Tour. Was tied third in Houston just before the Masters and then third in the Masters. But since then, his form has been indifferent. He's lost it a little bit. Missed the cut in the Memorial and the US Open. Well, the lie doesn't look too bad here for Jordan's feet, just short iron. Got me one of his wedges. That is a cracking way to start. No, no, no. I used to, I used to do an interview with him every year. Uh, Justin Rose's fortunes in the open started so well as a 17 year old amateur tied fourth in 1998. And he played here in 2007. Harrington was the winner. He was tied 12th, missed the cut. First year as a pro when he had 22 consecutive missed cuts. Paul Laurie emerged the champion. Open. And still that tied fourth as an amateur is his best result. He was tied sick at St Andrews in 2015.
just the one major title so far, the 2013 US Open, which he won in spectacular style by two from Phil Mickelson. Phil denied again a US Open, the only one missing from his CV in terms of a career slam. That was a very tough course, and he, I'll never forget the forearm that he hit into the 72nd hole. It was just a magnificent shot. And he generally does better. I'm not saying he necessarily plays better, but he does better on harder courses because he did, still does well and others don't do so well. That's all great ball strikers. Loved a tough course. You think of Retief and his two US Opens and really tough courses. And uh, Justin Rose now for a birdie. Should come a bit from his right. He gets very involved with the idea of process. He doesn't want to think about outcome at all. Just wants to make sure that he goes through the right process all the time. And they're applying that to his putting. Because they do acknowledge that it's probably the weakest part of his game. Not to say it is a bad putter, but he's a bit streaky. But they work on the basis that if you have this as an average, then if you have a few bad days when you're below your average, you're going to have other days when you're good and you're above your average. So I suppose the way that Brad Faxon used to think about his putting, well, if I miss one, then statistically I'm even more likely to make the next one. <laughs> yeah, well, I think everyone's got to accept that the better ball strikers are always going to take more putts because they hit more greens. They're going to have more putts. And well, I'd rather have a guy shoot 68 with 34 putts and a guy shoot 66 with 22. Because you know the guy, the guy is hitting the ball well as well as doesn't have to hold too many putts to get around. You smack yourself on the back when you get round with 22 parts and 66. Happy barn rep for a flying start. Oh, get in. Nice. Whoops. Whoops is right. Wow. Now setting out to play full time on the PGA Tour, having done well in Europe and obviously in Asia where he started out. Get in. Nice. That's the way he plays. He has a full go at everything. There's no question about it. Normally, uh, the soundest of putters, but uh, I always think speed is the most important thing in putting. Well, he might pick up a tip or two from this man. Too true. But his putting has not been so good of late, so statistically, he's due something very special. Looked good for much of his journey. It was a good roll. And a good weight too, really. seen this ball is going to move a bit from right to left for Matthew Barnrat. Matthew seen it in with a, a fair amount of pace, so probably right edge inside right will be the line he chooses. Good man. Born in Bangkok, still basically his home. He must have a few millionaire miles by now. Yeah, we did so have you. Nothing like him. <laughs> Just 
Justin Rose with a new Ardmore pattern. Well, relatively new. He's been using it since the HSBC Champions back end of last year and feels very comfortable with it. I've always considered him a bit innocent. You said not considered a very good putter. I've always felt he's a very good all around. You know, he has periods when he doesn't hold out so well, but I mean, normally he's pretty sharp, I think. The second hole, a real tough hole, 476 yards today. The bunkers, as you can see, both left and right to avoid. And uh, the real boys have been flying at past those first two bunkers, 320 to reach the one on the right, and then five bunkers surrounding this second green. And the hole today is cut right in the back of the green, 46 paces in, and the green is 56 paces deep. So, they're playing it as long as they can. Yeah, the course is not far off its maximum length today. It is the longest course on the open rotor. You're carrying the T70. Yeah. That's a little more into the wind. Good one. Huh? Yeah. We were talking about the new Titleist drivers earlier on the TS2 and the TS3. Justin Spieth is a, a Titleist yeah. staff player, but is not using it. In fact, he's not even using the, the predecessor, the 917. He's still got a, a 915. He's slow to change his equipment. Needs convincing. See that bunker on the right, 268 to carry, which you can do comfortably. Oh, Jordan, go hard. Go, go. Yeah, it's okay, just stopped in line. Talking about drivers, then, uh, Julian, I never forget Sam Sneed's hit. You get a good driver, don't ever let it go. You just hang on to that for dear life. And that is course talking about persimmon days. Yeah, I think things have changed a bit. No, they have indeed. <laughs> they can do so much with the, the modern equipment. Justin Rose with tailor made 440. He reckons he can normally fly this 295 to 300 yards. Not sure if he'd be able to do that in these conditions. That's good. <laughs> yeah, he's looking a little cut up, don't they? But there's been a lot of traffic over this week. There's Happy Barnett looking to be aiming a long way left. But whooping it straight down the middle. Depends where you pitch. You can pitch into an upslope, pitch on a downslope, get a skid and another 30, 40 yards. But that's the way things look. Kevin Kisner is still leading by one at seven under, having bogeyed the eighth and birdied the ninth out in 34. Very impressive by the inform Eric Van Royen continuing to be a major contender at this stage. The round of the championship by the course record holder, not in an open. The open course record here is 64. Held by Steve Stricker and Richard Green, both in 2007. Shot that, but Tommy Fleetwood shot a 63 in the Dunhill Links last year to establish that course record. Fleetwood, of course, runner-up to Brooks Kepka in the US Open and really knocking on the door for his first major title. Alex Noren won't, I think, mind too much being a little bit back. 
along with the likes of Charlie Hoffman and Adam Scott. Noren has that ability to come from some way back, as he's proved time and again. Francesco Molinari rather fell away at the end of his run for a, a 72. Jason Day also in there at level par. Tiger still level, playing the last. Danny Willett a couple over now through 12. Just had a double bogey at the 12th, which has not done his chances any good. The man who played well last year at Berkdale, Sean Norris, making a comeback. Started there at 74, three over, now two under par today. Just finished out the top 10 last year with a, a weakish last round. Bernhard Langer continues to impress. Extraordinary. Par par birdie start. Lee Westwood safely in for the weekend after a 72, one over. even today as is Ernie Els. Well now it's 76 players of plus two so actually it's moved out a little bit and I suppose if it stays like this conditions probably are a bit easier now the ground has certainly softened which will make the course play longer but arguably may be a bit easier it stopped raining there's gentle wind perhaps it will be a two over cut mm. three, three good tee shots for our group today We're happy about round first to play <laughs> remember the whole cut right in the back of the screen Violent and quick swing there, just didn't give himself a chance to hit it. Well, there are worse places to be. The lie doesn't look too bad, he's got some green to work with. Got a lovely touch around the greens. An unusual shot from my thought, did Julia? Normally, he's quick, but he finishes the shot and just, just somehow just seemed to snap at that one, snatch at it. Jordan Spieth coached by Cameron McCormack since he was 12 years old as a Trinity Forest Academy in Dallas where he lives. He's been putting in a lot of work trying to sort things out. Well, the club suggests it's not too bad. Nice and quiet, please, folks. Thank you. Voice of Fooch, who is an outstanding caddy and has a great relationship with. Justin Rose, he gets a certain amount of flack every now and then, but it's just like water off a duck's back. Not too much more than a dial. He has found a huge amount of distance, especially with the driver. He's probably 30 yards longer now than he was two or three years ago since he's worked with Sean Foley. Little kick. Get the kick. Oh. Came through the, the Faldo Junior system, Junior Series, and had a good association with Faldo. And I think he, 
inherited a lot of his very technical, very professional approach to the game. He leaves absolutely nothing to chance. And an example of that is this week. He's changed his setup quite considerably in, in terms of clubs in the bag. And I would, wouldn't be a bit surprised if he's the only player in the field who hasn't got a pitching wedge in the bag. We'll come back to that in a minute. This is his major championship record. 14 top 10s. That's the cut 17 times in 57 championships. And just the one win so far, that win at Merriam we were talking about in 2013. But has come close a couple of times, very close to winning the Masters. Which you know he would just love to have. Who wouldn't want that green jacket? Hutchie's got a green sweater on today. Yeah, I have too. <laughs> yeah, we're all three players, well, two players nicely on the green with chance of the birdies and Matthew Vaughan had to, a little chip from a bank above the green and a fair amount of green to work with, so he should, with his touch, be able to chip it fairly close. So normally Rose would carry four wedges, but he wanted to put an extra long iron in around here. So he's taken his pitching wedge out and they bent his 56 degree wedge to 54 and a half degrees and his 50 degree wedge to 49 to cover the hole left by the pitching wedge. I'm surprised he wanted more long irons. This he was off the tee. Of course, he's playing so hard and fast. Anyway, here's Barnrat. Delightful. It is. <laughs> well, you tipped it, you said. You'll be okay from there. I, I thought it was a little awkward. It obviously had a fairly clean line, but beautifully played shot. Wrong line, though. Yeah. He was on the Piccadilly, should have been on the circle. It's great for him that he speaks English really well. I think if you're going to go and play the PGA Tour, it's a huge advantage. Must be, I mean, it's a, a, an alien place anyway for Asian players to go and play, but if you can't speak the language, it must be doubly difficult. And he's a lovely fellow. It actually got the edge of the hole there. That could have gone in for the same price. Beautiful reaction. This is very much in Spieth's range. Oh. Just a touch firm through the break. He doesn't leave you wondering what he's thinking. The yardage book there and the green book as provided by the RNA, the green book which has contour lines like an ordnance survey map of the green and literally thousands of little arrows giving every tiny break. Rose hoping it'll help him to a birdie and it doesn't. times a winner on the European Tour including winning in Hong Kong back in 2015 on a wonderful old style course most recently winning the 2017 HSBC champions Shenzhen in China and then the Turkish Airlines Open last year coming to the end of the European Tour season Rolex series tournament I'd speed to pop this one in the first par at the par four second.
Let's have a look at the third hole. Also not a very long hole today playing at 358 yards. You see those nasty buckets in the middle of the fairway. You can have a dip. Several players did have a go at this yesterday and managed to knock it just on and over the green. That one down there, 295 yards. But again, it'll be a little easier to lay up today because the fairways definitely will have softened a touch. Although the water has been so hard, it's probably lying on top of the fairways. But you can see Barry Burn that winds its way around the golf course. Another place you want to stay out of. It's lovely little hole. Arrows, of course, indicating the slopes on the green. Michael Grello, Jordan Spees, Caddian, longtime friend, a former maths teacher who persuaded to come out and caddy for him. Pretty good at working out the numbers. And the Rolex clock half past three. The second day of the Open Championship at Canusti. Not much iron required here. If you don't take driver, then really you did probably only need about a seven iron. Come up short of the bunker. Maybe a bit more today with less, less sting, less run. He's gone right of the bunker there, hasn't he? Or am I seeing to No, he's in that rough. It just it would have expected that probably to kick onto the fairway. But it's amazing. I've seen lots of balls go in there, and they just stop, even when it was really hard and burnt. He's bemused. Well, um, I think the scoreboard, the yellow scoreboard. Yeah, finishing. The hole is well back in the green, 33 paces into the green. Uh, more or less in the centre, 30 paces from the right. I would have actually thought today they could be a bit more adventurous and take a club that would carry the two bunkers in the middle of the fairway. It's 250 odd to carry the second one. You've got then 40 yards of run before you hit the next bunker. Although they'd be worried about running into the burn on the left, I suppose. He's got a bit more club here. Indicating nice and straight, and there it is slightly on the upslope. It looks like that'll give him a nice chance with the second shot into the green. Well played. The key thing there that's an area where practically everybody's playing to if you don't hit driver. So there are an awful lot of divots there. Just hope you avoid one. Right, yeah, a little drama here yesterday. Took a nasty double bogey and one of the shortest holes at the golf course. Little twirl of the club there indicates it must be a good one, and it is. Perfect. Darren Clark, a couple of groups ahead, has made a very undistinguished start. Bogey, 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 followed by a par at the fourth. He's now 14 over. Uh, it's really striding out there. Kevin Kisner has dropped a shot at the 10th. Back to a share of the lead with Zach Johnson at 6-under. 
the youngest players to win three different majors. Jordan Spieth, the second only to Jack Nicklaus in that regard, beat Tiger Woods to win the three different ones. Just needs the US PGA for the full set for the career slam, which of course Jack and Tiger have both done a number of times. the only player to have all four majors in his locker at the same time albeit not in a calendar year the so-called Tiger Slam just key thing really is to find the fairway here and Spieth hasn't done that well, they've all left themselves lofted irons into the green so I think it depends so much on the bounces. You've got to, to get the wrong bounce, you can get in trouble. We're going to try and for 31. I think it's playing 22. That's just a nice one. It's near the top. There's a six straight opening, over par opening round in the major. 72 yesterday. Got 151 yards left, so this should just be a, a good nine iron for him. Doesn't want to have to smash it because the greens are taking a bit of spin now, coming in the short irons. Nice smooth one. Go over either. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a mistake. I think he probably has got a stance, but the ball will be below his feet. We got 44. Be a very awkward bunker shot. <laughs> it's not a great lie for Spieth. You really can't guarantee how that's going to come out. back of the ball a good old thump lovely sound and a lovely oh it just snuck too into one of the soils and so just in the light rough there but still probably able to put it up the hill there not any old one from Conrad as always wasting no time a quick explosive swing and coming up way short Look like he was trying to get a sand on there, Junior. That's confirmation of Kevin Kisner dropping a shot back into a share of the lead. A multicultural leaderboard. A couple of Americans, a couple of British and Irish. South Africans, a couple more Americans, another South African, Korean. Something for everyone. The Spaniard John Rahm making a move early in his round. Fowler birdied the first to get it to two under. That with a nine iron in his hand was a pretty indifferent shot from Justin. He will be discombobulated. He's a good bunker player though. Warren Humphreys has woken up and 
rejoined us. Yeah, thank you, uh, Do uh, Dookie. I was going to Julian. Never know who you're going to work with these days. Oh, no, anyone coming off the street. <laughs> it is a particularly good bunker place. Scrambling's been good, but two things about Justin Rose a little bit concerning this week. He's played the odd strain shot. I feel that he's actually really got into the tournament yet. There's three particularly different shots, really. Getting him with nine iron or less. But Speed has such wonderful touch around the greens. Then, be surprised if he holds it. Could be a pretty magic one from here. Well, let me tell you, that's a little bit outrageous because the moment he struck that as it was going towards the bank, I thought he so overhit that. And as it went over the hill, it started to grab and it got some spin as it went down the hill. You could almost hear it fizzing and then it just put on the brakes. I'll be honest, Julian, did you ever see this movie before? <laughs> no, fantastic shot. I mean, it's worth looking at it. Yeah. And that was live, I promise you. Yeah, I know it was. This nice. is live. Nice and quiet with the cameras, please. Yeah, you. the odd click of a camera upsetting him just as he got settled into the sand. Orchid with the ball below his feet, a steep bank in front of him. But no bother. Well, that would have been something, wouldn't it? Speed chip in and then Rose hole a bunker shot. All but more like it from Justin. Seemed to play that with quite a square club face, just got it running across the green. Yeah, I wonder whether the slightly wetter sand there is making him have that small alteration. Caddy, good slip catcher. Have to be a good catcher these days if you're going to be a caddy. <laughs> True. You never know what's going to be thrown at you next. No. Or at what height or how fast. It looks a particularly difficult putt this coming up a spine here in the green for Appy Barnrat. Caddy trying to show the line, not allowed to touch the line there. Hover above it, but can't touch the grass. I don't think he's a very good green reader because he invariably gets his caddy to read them for him. Uh, not bad from where he was. Getting a line from your caddy is a sure Warren will be always been a great putter, Warren. He doesn't know what speed you're going to hit the ball at. All he can do is give you an indication the ball will move one way or the other, and then you've got to work out what, because of the pace you hit the ball at. Well, we've seen with those gizmos that they have where they show if you go at it boldly, it's one line, and if you take maximum break, there's another line, and you've got all the other lines in between. Too true. This one should go in straight and firm. It'll be a very good two putt. There you go. We've been assuming all day that the cup would go to three over. A moment ago, there were 75 players on 
two over now. They're only 71. So three over does look more likely again. Yeah, and then a little while ago it was 78. It, it really is yes. fluctuating, isn't it? I wonder how many times we're going to see this shot today replayed. Fired off, and I would think shot of a champion. Just the sort of thing that he does, and then it ignites the flame inside him, and he can go on and make oh half a dozen birdies in a row. It seems. Will that be the thing that gets him going today? Out with the driver here. Yeah. Yeah. No holding back. The fourth hole, 401 yards, so he can get very close to it if he avoids the bunker. It's one up the left. At about 270 to get by, as you can see, 271, and the bunker on the right should cause no problems. The fairway sits sideways onto the player, though, so kicks away to his right. Aiming for a draw here, which is his favourite shot. Throw it on the green from there. It is amazing how the, the low spots on the fairway in between all the little humps and hollows are really greening up. Has got the big gun as well. Did 40 yard to carry that bunker on the right, so not really a problem. I get into the bunker on the left, or is it left? Of it? Hey. Oh boy. They're just so well placed, the bunkers around here, aren't they? Just get a little bit offline, just play the wrong shape. You know, so hard to recover from them. He is mad. He's made that mistake. He's aiming at that left hand bunker and cut it, not draw it. Standing right. Should be okay there. There's a bunker way, way right, but. It's in the thicker stuff, and you can get a nasty lie every now and again. That roughly a little wispier than normally is, but uh, you can find some very tough stuff too. Just now Johnson sharing the lead. Finnow has opened up with a par at the first. And the Lombard has got a long wait today before he fires away. Luke List has birded the 14th. Moved to two under. Thomas Peters out in 37 which is one over, has started back birdie birdie at 10th and 11th. Get to two under. Just feel as though he's very close to playing well. I felt that for a few weeks. John Rahm started birdie bogey to remain at two under. Matthew Southgate has birdied the 14th and the 15th to get to one under. Wood, dropping a shot at the second, slipping back to level par. Bernard Langer, still on one over after four. Tremendous. Justin Rose, level fours, starting par, par, par.
Rose, plenty of experience in this championship play in his 17th Open. Compare that to Afi Barnrat, who'd be playing in his fifth. Spieth playing in his sixth, and he's got a lot more experience than the men that he's playing with, although Spieth is the champion golfer of the year, but last year, that is. But all that experience didn't keep him out of the bunker down the left side. 138 to go. Spieth 93 yards, that's right in his wheelhouse. And Afi Barnrat, who only had eight greens in regulation yesterday, in the thick stuff. Didn't waste any time there, Justin just chopped it back onto the fairway. Now he's got a pitch and putt for par. Don't often see him rattled, but you feel that he's close to being really rattled. Yes, he has such high expectations of himself. When it doesn't go according to plan, you can understand that frustration building. mentioned earlier on that he is the most consistent golfer in terms of the world rankings over the last 10 years. He's the, the highest ranked golfer, I should say, not the most consistent. Well, he got the club on the ball there seemed to f absolutely fizz through the grass normally you can hear it if you get plenty of grass trapped between the club face and the ball it comes out with much more of a thud but got a real click so he must have picked up a good line there wonderfully talented player but Loses quite a lot of shots around the green. If he could sharpen up his short game, he would be one heck of a player. Which you'd seen the chip he played at the second hole today, not near holding from the ridge on the left of the green. There, it's actually touched the hole, left it like this. Marvellous shot. Just a very gentle breeze in his face off the left. Looks like there are people on the green, but they're on the 14th. It's the only shared green on the course. Ooh, more trouble. It's going to need a release valve on the pressure cooker at this rate. Modern thing about pulling across the line, the divot there going left where the ball started. Now Spieth. And we went dancing. A lovely pitch. Anyways, it's a great shame we've had the amount of rain we've had today softening the course up because you don't really want the ball to spin that much on the greens. Really the true Lynx course, you want them a little firm, not baked hard, but enough to encourage players to come in from the right angle on the fairway to attack flags. The amazing thing there were, even yesterday's Cagey checking it up. I mean, they hit the ball so well, then they create so much spin on some of their short irons. It's, it's astonishing, to say the least. It's, it's great to watch. Well, they get such great club head speed these days. There's young, they work hard in the gym. They're very fit equipment, lighter than it ever used to be, so they can generate more speed ball itself reacts better to the equipment that they use as well. A little bit like the old days, the old leather football it used to weigh a ton when it got wet. It yeah, doesn't true. these days. But if it gets like a bar of soap in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see if Happy Varak can play a 
Another nice little chip from the edge of the green. A lot of green to work with. Decent lie. Okay, that will do. Played down in Perth this year in the Perth Super 6 event was a match play. Only just qualified and then had umpteen goes to eventually get that last place. Had to chip a putt on the 18th about four or five times. So he can be good around the greens. Rose needs to be now to make a bogey. That play, that I Played with beautiful control there, with no sign of rush in that at all. He knew exactly what he was doing. And great control of the club face and club head. Well done. Living into the back of the ball there, but not allowing the club head to get away, still holding on to the club head. Look at that running up and down the pin, isn't it? It's a beautiful picture. Great camera work. That's when he lost it. The wind got it, I think, for <laughs> Not sure if he's still using his favoured old putter. I suspect it is a Scotty Cameron that he's had for 10 years. 009, it's numbered. Licence to kill. I think the look said it all. He was fooled, misread the putt. <laughs> so the chip on the last screen, not getting him to a run of birdies at the moment. Interesting, the most birdies in a row we've had so far in the championship is three. Five players did it yesterday. I think a couple of players have done it today. Not more than that. Shows you how tough it is to make red numbers out here yeah, no, it's the cross-handed putting oh, he's gone the other yeah there he is cross hand left below right but tops him in the hole very firmly and that day he's got just as long a putt as he started with and that's what i'm saying you know he's played a nice chip but you know around the green sometimes he gives away shots where you think other players would have just gone ahead brush that in now he could miss this one yeah he could do but he's a fighter as you remember when he came back at Berkeley kept coming back when he won that Paul Laurie match play all those years ago in Aberdeen he really came in from some astonishing places and uh, a wonderful win. Oh, he's huge and talented. It's almost as if he lose, loses concentration somehow. Not often Rose loses his concentration, but two mistakes on that hole. Cost him a bogey. Second bogey this week. Hmm. It's pretty steady playing. Drive it down the left of the fairway, really, to open up the second shot on five. Further you go left, the better angle you're going to have to come into the green. On the massive putting surfaces. Pretty narrow. You know, he got 19 birdies over 94 pars. 17 bogeys, just the one double bogey today. It's playing right to its par of four. 
15th. Tough and cold out there today. It's called Bray. Yeah, you can. It's going to be warm. Maybe not brave. I like, I like golf courses with names where they name the holes and they mean something. I hope you. I was hoping you're going to tell me what it means. No, I was hoping you were going to come <laughs> in. Yes, it means that. I'm not Scottish. And young bunny banks and young bunny braes. players these days that is really weak left hand grip for him. The old three knuckle grip and even four knuckle grip you see a lot of these days. I can tell you Bray means a steep bank or hillside. Don't want to be on that steep bank or hillside here. You want to be on the middle of the fairway Justin. of an iron to find this fairway. This is Barry Byrne runs across it. Oh well, well. patience to play these courses because you kind of get good bounces and bad bounces and you've somehow just got to learn to accept them and keep going it's not easy to do always John Rahm and Ricky Fowler playing together, have both gone to three under with birdies at the third. Just three back from Zach Johnson, the clubhouse leader, and Kevin Kistner out on the course. You probably have to say Ricky Fowler's overdue a really good open. Isn't he? O overdue a major win. Yeah. But he's not the only one. No, true. There's so many good players there, Julian. That you've got to be very lucky as well as very, very good. I would say going into this week, you could have picked 50 names, maybe, who had the potential to win. What? I think Warren was saying there's over 30 major winners in the field. So we know, there are a lot of guys that know how to do it, get it done. So to add another 20 is, is easy to do. Always interesting watching the modern way players play. For many a year, it was thought not a good idea to bow the left wrist but although he has that shut position with the wrist at the top of the swing the shaft doesn't lay behind him so still comes down on a fairly neutral line on plane you still have to be very strong to hold that line through impact much more technically sound in a way the old way of playing has the left wrist at the top of the swing slightly cut a la mr hogan he'd hate to hear you saying that he thinks he's very modern well he is yeah <laughs> well there is the modern swing and there is the latest swing then if you like or the latest thoughts about the game not always the latest thoughts turn out to be necessarily correct there can be little fads that people go through yeah, that's the perfect description if you'll forgive me fans that go yeah. through
Mm. Yes, he and Sean Foley have all sorts of theories. Sean Foley, I think, in particular, has, they talk about the D-swing and all sorts of technical stuff. I think it's just designed to baffle, really. Can't be much more than a little 7-iron here for Appy Barn Rat. Trying it into the slope. There is a little backstop behind there, which he could have used to bring back to the hole. Pin cut right in the pinched area, the figure of eight, the screen. The deep the screen is, isn't it? Just past the hole, it's sort of the bottom of the slope there. Now, well, 56 paces long, only 15 paces across, though, at its narrowest point. And you can see that flag is just in place, it almost looks like it's off the green there, but it is six from the right hand edge. shake of the head after he hit this didn't really like it it's going to work very well for him it's finished in a good spot quite out the middle of the bat not quite the delivery that he wanted almost looked like he was trying to hold it up against what little wooden there is there Hundred fifty-five yards left for space line long way left of the flag that's where the ball finished I have quite a bit of movement on that putt from left to right for Jordan strangely has that weak grip that you were talking about and yet bows the wrist at the top of the swing it looks ungainly sometimes you feel he's not really ever going to have the club in his hands I agree with that completely just it, it, it's it looked very awkward somehow they get through the ball and goes through it very well but it's amazing how he manages often we see him though with some long shots driver the, the hand coming off the face the, the right hand coming off not able to keep the club head going through down the target line with both hands on it you found a three under par today yep That's just four. had another birdie at the fourth to get to four under Kevin Chappell's birdied the 14th also now four under Tony Finn out birdie at the second five under just one behind Woodland back to back birdies at the seventh and eighth. Two under. Eddie Pepperell has eagled the fourteenth to move under par. What an amazing year Eddie Pepperell's having. What a turnaround in his fortunes. Went to Qatar. Hadn't been playing really too well suddenly gets a win under his belt and becomes a firm believer that he should be a multiple winner he don't nearly won again he finished second at the uh, Scottish Open the other day yeah. Brandon Stone who also came from nowhere but we did know that he was a winner anyway Brandon Stone. Yep. confidence impossible to measure
I'm going to cross the screen here for everyone, right? As Warren mentioned, it should come a bit from his left. Okay, missing a little one in the last. He might be more circumspect with the pace. Left it well short. He normally is a sort of boldish stroke, isn't it? But it's amazing. One mistake, all of a sudden, you start to doubt yourself. And the funny thing about putting, if you've got to think how hard hit it, you never hit it the right way or the right speed. Absolutely correct. But you do have to visualise the pace, don't you? I mean, you see the ball coming off, you see it rolling across the green, you get an idea of the pace. It's an imaginary thing in your head. And then you try and duplicate that, that early bobble. I always used to align the speed the ball was going off the putter face and going around, and also the noise it made so that when you made contact with the putter, you had two points of reference. The impact, the sound it made, and the ball rolling across the green. Really helped with long pace putts. Absolutely not for these modern putters. Now they've got that top thing, you can't feel the ball coming up. Off the putter. How do you learn how hard to hit it? You yeah. want to feel it off the putter. That's right. Well, the more senses that you can use and suck into your system, then the better off you're going to be, whether it's sight, sound, feel. goes and there it goes well now the rain stopped it's going to start raining down with birdies maybe when you consider what Ricky Fowler's done Rams made a couple of birdies Spieth now two on the card could get very lively this evening Has he got the best head in world golf at the moment, do you think? I'm not sure. I think sometimes it can be a little fragile. Yeah. Who? Jordan Speed? Yes. Do you? Yeah, I think he's had his ups and downs this season. Could be the hardest par five. Certainly on the open rotor. Maybe one of the hardest par fives in the world. Hogan's Alley, it's called. We know that. In between the bunker and the out of bounds. Hogan drilled it when he won around here. But look at the way that burn comes in up the right hand side. You still got the out of bounds to contend with. Green is surrounded by bunkers and one well short. And the rough fall down the right hand side. If you ever want to think about bailing out, it's not very friendly. No, it's not at all. It's a, it's I a mean very the, the hole's very a beast. scary hole. Oh, it's a beast. Normally, par fives, you think, oh, phew, it's a breather. You know, I can either pop it on the green, or at least if I lay up short, I've got a chance pitching a putt. There is no let up here at all. And you better boom it, those three bunkers. Diagonally going away from you on the right, very much in your view. Yeah. It's off the oh. planet. Miss the one you're going right at. Kick right. Oh. Can you get right into that one, huh? How do you get in that bunker? Well, well if you drive it in a bunker here, you're just looking at six, aren't you? Straight away. I mean, you hope you make six after that. Nice and still, please. Nice and still, please, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I would be a player that would aim at the right-hand bunkers and try and draw it off them to bring it back to the fairway, which would okay head towards the outer bounds. I know you, Dennis. You'd you'd be aiming it down the outer bounds fence and cutting it. Yeah, that's probably what I would do. I don't like moving the ball towards trouble, but that way you're moving it towards the bunkers. Well, it's just a very, very difficult drive. 
Oh, that looks perfect. It turns a little more, carry the front bunker. Uh, that is as good as it gets. That's a magnificent tee shot. Hogan would be proud. In fact, if you haven't got a shape in your armory on the most of the tee shots here, you won't get round Carnoustie. That's very true. Come on, it just a little check to the left. Uh, you'll be okay, but yeah. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. All the bunkers somehow gathered the ball. Oh, lucky Jim. Yesterday that would have been in. Grass would have been a bit more fiery, a little drier, so. Riding his luck there, Appy Barnrat. How about this for a tee shot though from Rose? Gets the club a long way back on the inside. Stays on that line as he comes up the back of the ball. Stop! 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 Just took out the early right hand bunkers, but there was another one away to the right. If he'd have pushed it a little bit, it would have found that one. 112 very well placed bunkers around this course. Kisner with a birdie at the 13th, resumes the lead on his own at 7-under. No one's ever been at double figures under par around Carnoustie in the Open Championship. Ooh. This is exciting, the plane is up. The weather is better. Yeah, the cloud base has lifted, it was too low earlier on, I mean it was almost on the ground at one point. Positively easy out there now. <laughs> Gives you a lovely idea of. Well, you can't call it the old grey town because that's St Andrews, but it is a bit of a grey town. <laughs> 54 holes. Well, three 18 hole courses, and then there are six holes that they use for training the youngsters, covered by much of the corporate hospitality at the moment. Uh, within the vicinity of Carnoustie, there's 34 other courses, well, it's 34 courses in total. Spoilt for choice up here. Well, you're spoilt for choice in Scotland, aren't you? Really, if you come here, whether it's on the west coast or the east, plenty of great courses to play. And they're not overly expensive either. One or two are. <laughs> well, if you go to a fancy name like Glen Eagles, then you pay yes. lots of money. Yeah, well, even the old course now is getting pretty pricey if you can get on it. Yeah, it's not a good enough. I mean, if it were teed up, I could maybe get like a full gap on it. But, but yeah, I'm getting it up. Yeah, a lot of them are just still very reasonable and lovely yeah. to play. Really good to play in Scotland. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's got a very lofty club in his hand, so this is just get it back in play and hopefully even get it 40 or 50 yards down the fairway, 100 max. Try and get it on the green in three, make a par, but he is going to be struggling now just to make a five on a par five. And if you make sixes on the par fives around here, and there's only a couple of them, you're really making life difficult for yourself. Is that sunshine? I told you it's lovely out there now. The trouble is where we are on the other side of the course, it's still quite grey. bit of fuel there for 
Justin Rose. Very important to keep fueled up because they will have started their practice regime some time back. Some players like to do a little bit of light gym work, then go on the range, a bit of physio, then putts. By the time you actually get out here, you've done two or three hours and you haven't had a time to eat. Made him funny. Now, I don't know whether he knocked it on the base plate, did he? Or, uh, I think he hit the bank in front of him. Ah, uh, that way. Uh, hold out on the seventh tee. Boy, and that. And he just caught the bank and it flipped off the mound in front of him. Launch pad. He's in the loo. <laughs> I think he's in the loo too. Yes, I think so. Don't flush it. He certainly didn't flush it from where he was. No, he certainly didn't. Let's see if Justin can. Three wood. <laughs> ah, so close. <coughs> you. You have to have bunker the hole today. At six, is cut right in the back of the green, so he's got. A sort of awkward little bunker shot along the side of the bunker, hasn't it? <laughs> there you can see your eyes are terrific so far, and I, I, I did I did, the way it bounced. I thought he might hit it on the base plate. I saw he knocked off one of the petals, those little wild flowers. Don't go, don't <laughs> stretch it. <laughs> well, he's done quite well out of the bunker, I think. Spieth moved it down there, but still got quite a yardage to go. Not much depth to the green, too, coming from this angle. 2.21 to go. It's 5 4 iron. That's amazing. I mean, how did that sit down? It almost pitched on a little bit of a, a downslope there. Yesterday, that would have almost leapt the bunker. Absolutely. It must have been a very lofted iron he was trying to hit, but the wind is sort of into them a little bit, isn't it, dear? And from his left. That's a wonderful ball follow from up there on the aeroplane. Oh, it could easily have been in two bunkers on this hole. You can see he's got lots of green to work with now. <laughs> Tony Finner parred the third to remain at five under. Xander Lombard is underway with powers at the first and second. Pat Perez, Birdie Turk the eighth. Now four under. John Rahm started Birdie, 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 Bogey, Birdie, but has powered the fourth and fifth. Looking very much as though there may only be ten, possibly even less shots separating first and last. It's going to be open season for practically anybody who makes the cut. No ten shot rule now in the open. That 
that's all one immovable obstruction now. So they've just come away from the advertising board. More than one club length, less than two. It was very substantial at one stage and was really feeling it quite hard just walking around the course, so he spent a lot of time in the gym. Lost a good 20 pounds. I'm sure he hasn't put a little bit back on, maybe, but certainly a lot fitter than he was. A little bit surprising he's walking all the way up there to the green. Obviously, he feels he's got enough time. Rather a big slope in the middle of that green, isn't there? Sort of a ridge that runs through it. But it's, I, I think Clay has been very, very slow. Long. I mean, this morning it took the boys over five hours to finish and uh, not getting any better this afternoon. Yeah, well, they normally allow four and a half hours. By the end of the day, 4.50 is what it's been before in the past round here. So to go over five hours is rather surprising because Although it was wet, it wasn't uh, as if it was howling gale out there. It was just drizzly sort of rain. Once or twice it got reasonably heavy, but nothing like a severe downpour. So it's a little bit disappointing they've gone over the five-hour mark. So many players seem to spend so much time drying the clubs off, then re-drying them, then putting their glove on, then re-drying the didn't yeah. used to happen like that. They put their glasses on to read the yardage book. Yeah. And, uh, Not playing ready golf. No, it really isn't. I mean, you think they do all that in the practice rounds and be able to do it a lot more quickly once the championship begins. But going straight up to green, I thought he had to come more across the bunker, but he doesn't. It's further back than I thought he was, and he can oh, sniff oh, away oh, and oh, nip oh, a little oh, birdie. Oh, yeah. lies are tight here you don't mind that if you're a top class player you really like to play nip these shots off as speed has done there run it down the green and get a lot of control in many respects the tighter the lie the better these players like it that sort of chip worries a lot of people to chip it over the bunker on a down slope anyway let's see he played a wonderful bunker shot earlier in the round at the uh, third hole, let's see if he can do it again. Uh, just pitch a little too high up on that down slope. Probably couldn't do a lot better than he's done. Slightly better angle here. He's pitching straight onto that down slope very hard. Didn't want to risk trying to land it right on top of that little knob. Let it then run down. Could have easily had it coming back into the bunker. semi-fat grip on Justin Rose's putter there. Interesting way he grips the club now, the putter I'm talking about. It's amazing how they managed to make the putter grip so light. And remember the old days used the big, heavy, big putter. It was so heavy you couldn't feel the head. 
No, no, no. Really done a fantastic job. A lot of players using the six grips now. anything going at the moment Justin two really good shots a little unlucky it went through to the back bunker normally so good at getting it up and down this is out on the chance to make a birdie stays one over for the round waiting patiently for that little spark to get his round really bubbling he dropped two shots, so he really hasn't made any birdies to speak of. Rose can Barnett pop this one in. Right in the middle. There's more than one way of making a board your opponent. Great imagination. And well done. Rose made a five. This to avoid six. And this is the distance that he sometimes makes a mess of. Sometimes it doesn't fill you with a great deal of confidence, the fiddling around. Some people are nice and calm when they get around short putts like this. Had a time where he looked at the hole, didn't even look at the ball. Yep. Good recovery. Seventh hole, 406 yards. A couple of bunkers right in the eye line there. Good hole to move it off those from right to left. Again, the out of bounds all the way down the left side, but fairly inviting green today. A lot of room right of that flag, back left it's positioned. 18 paces on, four from the left. So very good chance for players to make birdies plantation it is called and that's heading towards those right bunkers but he's carried them Didn't carry them by much you need a good hit Well, the first two don't like the look of the fairway, obviously. The out of bounds really is a factor off this tee for the quality of these players. Obviously, getting a little bit warm out there. Rose discarding the sweater. 
Scott Jameson made a nine here a little while ago. I bet he went out of bounds. And Charles Schwartzel made an eight here yesterday. Swing, Rosie. Lovely. I think he's going to make an eight or nine off that tee shot. Surprising though, that's in the first cut. I thought that would have hopped out onto the fairway. Really good, solid hit though, wasn't it? Pretty much right out of the meat of the club face. Changes at the top of the leaderboard. Ricky Fowler has got away to a flying start. Three birdies in the first four holes to move to four under. Brandon Stone playing steady par golf today. One birdie, one bogey through 11 holes on the back of his massive Scottish Open win last week. Good round of 68 to move within five of the current lead. Danny Willett, who double bogeyed the 12th, got those two drop shots back with birdies at the 14th and 15th. Two under. Brooks Kepko, we were watching this morning, going round in 69. <laughs> Got three shots in the last four holes in his round, coming home in 37 for a 71. Which can level part. And a shuffler started with four straight pars. Winner of the Tour Championship last year on the PGA Tour. Louise Tozen, one over. 3-5, champion eight years ago now at St Andrews, on 31 bogey. To start with, Chris Wood has dropped a couple of shots early on. <laughs> 72 players at the moment on plus two. Has been moving around, but as yet it hasn't crossed the barrier into the three over mark so I think that will be the first play 131 yards so Speed's going to have a pretty good angle coming in from where he's going to be laying from. So as long as he's got a decent line, that right rough, he can use all of the putting surface from the front of the green. 10, 18 paces on. Dramatically closer than the group we watched through this morning, who were around 200 yards for their second shot. They hit driver as well. I don't think we can have done that. Stop, stop. Oh. that came out a little bit fiery. I don't know whether it's gone through the back of the green. Justin, just over the 100 yards to go for him, and just a slightly soft lie here in the semi-rough. Can he get it the right length? Okay, 
really an easy birdie range. Mentioning earlier before you came in, he's adjusted his wedges this week because he's taken out his pitching range. I think that was probably his lob wedge there, which he has not adjusted. He's gone down from four to three wedges. From the hay, from the hay, and that's the difference. No spinning. Akiban Rat did, in fact, go through the green. <laughs> ah, clear water at the top. Kevin Kisner has birded the 14th. Too clear. Birdie at the third to get to five under. Barrett going out in 34. Four on the par. Thomas Peters getting it to two under again, having dropped a shot at the 12th, has birdied the 14th. Chip or a putt? It's looking like a chip. Or is it? Just what's ahead of it there on that fringe grass. It's got the putter out. If it's all pretty tight, lie that fescue grass, which is so nice to play off on these links courses, then the ball will run across it nicely. You just get a little bit of a green patch, then uh, that could make it tricky because you get different pace is involved with the different types of grass. for the, the moving pictures every now and then. We've got a lot of cameras out here and they're, they're working to different directors. So our director on this channel has to work very hard to give you nice pictures. So just in that little sway, a little bump to go over to get onto the green as it then flattens out. Decision to use the putter. Excellent touch. He's done well from off the green when you think that he chipped in on three. Could easily have hold that from way off the green. Get him anywhere within 30 or 40 yards of the putting surface, and he's really hunting. Let's just try to get it close. He tries to hold. And quite often succeeds, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose if you don't think big, you won't get big. would have learned something off Spieth's part as it went down to the hole. Fraction too pacey. It's 
see Justin Rose in the background just holding up his one and two fingers. He's one of the relatively few players, I think, who still persists with the aim point express method. Another one of those fads. Works for some, but how I don't know. Well, Ju Justin's definitely not a natural putter. I think it's something he has to work quite hard at. to remain at plus three. Stays at a tie for 75th place. 70 in ties go through. Projected cut, you can see there, plus two. Got to play under par to make sure you get a in the draw for tomorrow. That's Jordan. Uh, Justin Rose, rather, knocking in for. Plus two is right on the mark. He's not making himself or making his task easy. Uh, he will look at the leaderboards. He'll know what's going on. He knows he's ten behind. Needs to get a wriggle on. Really good. Par three, the eighth. It's called short. It's not that short at 183. Very well protected today by the right-hand bunkers. A lot of players have been in those. And the winds just tended to be a little bit off that left side. And anything going high as you try to cut one into that right corner, it just floats up there. Very easy to end up in the right-hand bunker. Plenty of room left of that flag. Left of the green is out of bounds. I don't think anyone's been out of bounds today, but three were out of bounds yesterday. Happy Barnett's already found ringside bunker. He does like to play quickly. Put him and John Daly together, they've been around in an hour and a half. Should set up nicely for Spieth. Likes to move the ball left to right. That's where he would have been aiming. It seems to turn out. It's gone back behind them as opposed to this morning where it was left to right, which would have made the seventh hole into the wind. Which is why that seventh might have been playing longer. So the wind has definitely quartered round.
Must be an eight iron for Justin. Good looking shot. No, it's very good looking. That's terrific. Good angles to the swing there of Justin. Blade angle at the top of the swing. Spot on, pointing parallel down the target line. Three quarters of the way back, just as it should be. Blade angle being the bottom of the club. You can put it on the ground. Three quarters of the way back, if that's parallel to where you want to be going, you know you've got the club on a good line. And the club face on a good line. It won't be shut and it won't be open. Much better settle skyline there. Spectators able to get their hands together and applaud instead of holding up umbrellas. Larry well, Barnett's obviously gone for the cut here on the eighth aimed it down the left side didn't cut actually went in the bunker could have been quite easy to actually go out of bounds oh that's just about going to be able to get at that without too much trouble Think about having the ball below your feet and you're having it just to stand in the bunker. You're going to get very steep at the ball. So he's going to have to grip down the shaft, aim this one further left with his body, have the club face really quite open. Oh, no. There's room to stand. You can almost stand with your feet together, really, to play this one if you wanted to. Would make it easier to make a body turn why do you get look he's turned his feet out that makes it way too difficult put your feet together Sevi will be turning in his grave very easy to get this one off the hosel now if you're not careful okay. good hands save his power watch that ball as it went past the hole see the amount of breaks and he knows it'll go the other way coming back when he puts it one of three Thai players in the field this week 28 countries Represented this week in the Open Championship. USA lead the way with the most. 54. No two for Jordan.
leading player from America, Dustin Johnson. He won't be here for the weekend. Plus six. Bubba Watson won't be here either. Some good players that'll be missing out for the weekend. Snedeker won't be here. Good time for Justin to get his round going. Trying to make the 11th birdie of the day here on eight. See the way he shakes his left sleeve loose once he gets up from the putt. He has little mannerism before he steps in where with his right hand he tucks his shirt into his left armpit probably designed just to try and make sure he stays connected. There you can see he's got a good five feet coming back. Putt that will break from outside the hole on that left side. He doesn't want to be going to four over par, which right now would be two outside the cut line. And that is a really good up and down. Really good bunker shot from a difficult situation. Good save. coming up behind on the seventh which incidentally is the hardest seventh hole on the open rotor John Rahm has just had a seven triple bogey slip back to level par no problems for Spieth as he remains at one under going to the ninth The railway hole, 457 yards, three bunkers dominate the right hand side of play. One at 305, I haven't seen too many players in that one, but now the wind has quartered round and it's a little bit more behind them. That could easily be in the minds of the players when they tee off just now. A lot of players are taking irons this morning, laying up short, but changing conditions. Happy barn right out with the big stick, going to give this a welt. It's a beauty. It's past the bunker at 3.05 and the Nicholas bunker. Starting to see the ball go a little bit higher. That might be the air getting a little bit thinner after all the rain. I've seen very few shots when we've shown that graphic with the height of the ball above 100 feet today. That's the first one from Matthew Barnrat. This morning in the rain, belting down, it was knocking the ball out of the sky. Some of them just. 40, 50 feet, that was all. Good 
be. Okay. Brandon Stone slipping away a bit with bogeys at the 12th and 13th. Back to one under. Jason Day, Tiger Woods all safely here for the weekend. Phil Mickelson two under for his round. He comes towards the end of it. Not a bad round actually for Phil, apart from a double bogey seven at the sixth. Five birdies in the round. John Rahm with the triple bogey seven at the seventh. Lots of players on plus two. Twenty-two players at the moment. Two. So those guys on three over are going to be sweating. Henrik Stenson, one of them. Bryson DeChambeau. Jason Duffner at three over. Till Hatton. A lot of people fancied him. He's got two to play. Three over. to think Justin Thomas could be defending his PGA title in a few weeks time at four over is probably out of it Sergio Garcia at four over Russell Knox at four over Garcia made a double bogey five at the 16th which did him in All players with a nice angle to this front left flag, but as one says, can they land it on the green and stop it? Only going to be going in with wedges. Sixth toughest hole today, averaging 4.22. 13 birdies, and that's down to the tin position as much as anything. It's not interesting because last time the uh, tournament was played here back in 2007, ranked 7th, 4.23. <laughs> Went naught one out from last time, so. Will you hold up, please, folks, for us? Thank you. Staying pretty steady. And this is the hardest ninth on the rotor. There's three holes here, the seventh, the ninth, and the twelfth that are the hardest of those respective holes on the rotor. I'm surprised it isn't the first 18. <laughs> Surprising that the 18th isn't the hardest on the rotor. Sit, sit. Oh, always going to be the slight problem coming from the rough what is the hardest hole on the open road or an 18 well it was it's taken from specific years when it was obviously very hard and it's Ross and George's oh, in yes. 85 oh. wouldn't it just happy bar right. oh he does get the ball to stick and stick very quickly Cracking shot. Well, normally I'm playing in America, one hundred and twenty two yards. Soft fairway to a soft green, it's target golf. Think about this a bit more.
three different takes on how to play the shot. Didn't trust himself to pitch it on the green there, Spieth. A little surprising, having watched Afi Barnrat ahead of him throw it at the flag. Similar sort of lie. Maybe Afi Barnrat bit closer to the edge of the fairway so he could get a little bit more spin that's obviously the reason thought his ball was just actually a, an inch or two inside the semi rough there more on the fairway yeah but actually speed I had the right idea. Didn't he? If, he'd, if he'd hit it straight, he'd be very close. Got the right length. Yeah, you just said the magic words though before, didn't you? That little word. Hit it straight. No, if. If. And hitting it straight is also quite an issue. Yes. Yes, I've seen you play. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being harsh. I can't remember if it was you or somebody else earlier on was talking about how important attitude was today. I wanted to add that I think it's probably the most important thing every day. Yes. Absolutely. Well, that's why this fellow's been so good, hasn't he? For so long now, his attitude every time he comes out is pretty good. Better than most. I'd like to see him get something going. Just almost take the handbrake off it looks so measured at the moment everything is played almost too exactly just like to go into freewheel a bit more and play on a little bit more flow there was the right hand going in tucking it in his armpit Remember when he had those marvellous matches in the Ryder Cup with Mickelson, especially at Medina. Yeah, we, although it was measured, there was a, a flow, there was a, a sense that he was going to make things happen and he didn't have the handbrake on, couldn't afford to have the handbrake on because Mickelson was playing so well. Hold some amazing putts. of little talking to come on yeah, you see with tennis players don't you they almost want to oh. charge themselves up to get into a state where they can play with a lots of release yeah I was reading some interesting stuff during Wimbledon about how trigger words are so important oh, just never quite on the right line for Spieth and it's so important for the the camp followers, the coaches and the spouses and all the rest of them to say the right thing at the right time. Perhaps more importantly, not say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Or even the right thing at the wrong time. Which is why caddies have to be psychologists these days as well as good bag men. Got to be mathematicians as well. Got to know the game. Not easy being a caddy these days. Not a lot in this as it comes slightly down an incline. Very straight. Look at that. Perfectly played hole. Second birdie of the day for Happy Barnard as he goes out in 35. Now two over within at the weekend distance.
two key bunkers here as they play down the 10th hole that's called South America. 296, that's the key one on the left. That's caught out plenty of players today. Players are trying to keep it on the left half of the fairways. They try and come into this flag tucked in the back right corner. Any shots finding the rough, then those two front bunkers. Very easy to tangle with those if you're coming from the left side. And well, that one on the right, anything leaking away if you try and play a cut over cuts can find that right hand bunker. This morning we saw Brooks Kepka drive it into the left hand bunker, 290 odd to reach it. And it landed quite well short and ran in, which shows you how far it wasn't flying, because normally he'd whack it over that. But he made an amazing up and down for par. No real damage there. Not finding too many fairways, is he, the last half dozen holes? Going right off the tee there to a right flag, protected by three trees down the right side and a bunker. Not the ideal line in. So close to that spectator walk in there. Wow. Did that go through his legs? Didn't seem to be too alarmed by it. Wow. Guess as long as you're st still standing, it's okay. Start it down the right edge of the fairway, draw it back, get it past that left hand bunker. Got it going down the right side. Well, now very hard to get up the flag. Almost impossible to get up the flag. It's got to aim at the center of the green, I would think, now for Rose. see what happened to that speed ball and that spectator what? as we know oh it did go through his legs can you believe it caught him just on the inside of the foot there wow glad he didn't get him right on the toe or the heel that really would have hurt got him on the instep work from Xander Lombard, one under, one birdie, three five. Player who's been hopelessly out of touch until very recently. Have a look back at what happened to Spieth earlier on today. This, a little bit of magic on the third. Absolutely outstanding shot there to find a way to get that in the hole. Normal people would have been doing well to get that one up and down. Here he was on the fifth. Good three or four feet of break on that pun as it went across the green. That was birdie number two. Thought he was going to make a ton of birdies after that, but had to actually get up and down from short of the six there, the par five, to make his part. 
Nicely done. Thirty-four out, couple under. Good work. A little bit of a mixed bag in terms of his striking. Got his own magic bottle. Some magic potion in there. Everyone's being encouraged to bring their own plastic or whatever bottles this year. They're trying to cut down as much as possible on plastic water bottles around the place. got no idea that it went through the legs of a spectator everyone's just said well here's your ball I don't think many of those spectators around there were around when the ball landed so I don't think that spectator is going to get a little memento from Jordan which I'm sure that if he knew what had happened might have given him an old ball or glove Thirty-five yards from the burn to the front of the green. Two oh one to go for Appy Barnrat. Oh dear, the four iron, which has seemed to lack a lot of club for him. It's a good shot though. It's about all he could really aim at. Certainly don't want to go long over the back of that green. Coming out of the rough, goes down into a big hollow very hard to get up and down if you go past that pin today no right, it's gonna hurt yeah it's good straight off the right Just on the left edge of the green side tree. And then drawing it back, okay? You should just, below should these branches? Yeah, I'm gonna hit a punch. Yeah. And that's my question, how far the hazard's way short? Yeah, it's okay. he's gotta be inside that tree. You get that yeah, yeah. working through. But my, my point 32, here is 32, it's just gotta cover, yeah, 20. It doesn't jump, it's like a seven. I don't think it's going to out of that. Just a seven punch, you know? Sure, he's fully aware yeah. that the burn but if it jumps, this is over meanders here. round, goes very close to the trees that he's going to be aiming at. So he's going to be going right down the line of the water here. Eight. So it better eight. draw. Yeah. It better not hit the tree. Yeah. I really Thank think you. it might. Okay. Yep. Right. Yeah, it's just 25 on the cover short. Well, it's decided in the end it, it might right. jump yeah. a bit, so he's gone for an 8 rather than a 7. Trees, so he's aiming directly down the water line. Wind is off the right, though, so it should help it hook. Pitched in the middle of the green, nothing wrong with that at all. How about that? What water? Superb shot. hands up to get the trap crowd to settle down as Rose goes to play his shot can't be much more than a wedge oh no don't go long oh that is such a mistake there's better be 
really testing down there if he can get it up and down so much will depend exactly where his ball's finished the lie he's got well he made a good decision here going for the eight iron The way he traditionally has putted, that's practically a gimme birdie. Rich Beam in the foreground, former US PGA champion, of course, commentator for Sky Television. He's going to be in a position to hopefully get to two under. Rose at two over. And he's in a much more difficult position. 71 players at plus two in the clubhouse are out on the course. So at the moment, it's a plus two cut. And at the moment, there are no amateurs in there. Sam Locke is in the clubhouse at three over. So he'd love it to go to three. He would then become the silver medalist because I think he's the only amateur that would make it. This is very tricky here for Rose. See where he's walked along. That's quite a steep bank. I don't think there's any way at all he can pitch it over that bank onto the green and stop it near the pin. There's just not room enough to do that. It's such a high tariff shot, so you'd think he's got to bumble it in the bank. And that bank is quite steep. Doesn't look it from the camber angle we have, but you've got to hit it pretty hard to get up there. There have been a number of players that have misjudged it where the walls got to the top of the slope, not quite made it, and has come back to their feet. And that was when it was really hard and fiery yesterday. A little bit more give in the ground, so it's softer. He's going to hit it harder today. He's going to get this on the ground pretty quickly, isn't he? Fairly straight face club. He wanted running up the slope, not pitching into it. problem was well the problem was getting the weight right and he's just managed that quite superbly that was just sensational really good imagination great feel great touch can't teach it he's got to hold the putt there to make the four Tough day for the 2011 Open champion Darren Clark. He's had three pars in 11 holes. Seven over today, 18 over in all. Taylor and Charlie, apart from David Duval, who retired after the first round. Not a lot of break in this putt for Appy Barrat. Get to the hole. Nope.
gives you a good idea of some of the slope there, that low camera angle. See as it comes up the hill, it can turn to his right. Yeah. Yes. Beautifully red, what a three. Now that's riding your good luck. The three at the third was the result of a brilliant chip. The three here, the result of a brilliant second shot. There's also a result of not hitting the spectator's foot in a different angle. The fact that he got the little shoot off and knocked it away to the right. Ball could have gone anywhere. his par putt. Now that is a shame after a beautiful chip. And Justin Rose is well he's not looking like a champion at the moment that's for sure. Thank you, Rose. He's looking Come like on, a man Justin. battling to make the weekend. hole is one where players have been able to drive it in the warmer drying conditions of the first day you can still hit drive here but you're not going to reach the green but it certainly does take those bunkers out of play which is so dangerous left and right off the tee it's a very short par four 382 yards playing 376 today So, speed thinks driver is the way to go. Yep. It's quite thick rough up the left side beyond the bunkers. Down the right it's not so bad. Every single hole though, these bunkers are definitely in play. You've got to be wary. Often he's been wide of them. A good one here, he should fly them, shouldn't he? Ball's finished. I mean, further left, it would certainly have been in sand. <coughs> Freer swing here of Happy Barnrat. Speed said he got stuck on the way back. This fella's never got stuck. Far too free for that. Such a subtle turn and a free swish with his arms. It does look as though there's a bit more wind now. It's into and off the left here. So it does need a good one to fly those traps. Oh, that was a good one too, wasn't it? Wow, look how far that's gone. Well, he whipped it on this green yesterday, had a putt for it too. Not shy to have a go. It is lovely outside at the moment. It's not really too warm. It looked like it was getting warmer and uh, it's just lovely, a mild breeze and uh, I think perfect conditions for the players as we watch Justin Rose's tee shot. Rose also with the driver. He's battling his game, he's definitely not on top form. Well, they certainly can make birdies from nowhere. I, I saw uh, Jordan Speed's tee shot way left at 10, they just passed that tree. I thought he'd been in trouble. He whips it out there. Right plus and pops the putt in for a three. What a game. Yeah, the 11th coming back in the opposite direction to the 10th, back into 
breeze, then the long straight par 4 12th, a really tough hole. It's actually the hardest 12th on the open rotor. 503 yard par 4. The delightful short 13th, playing 174 yards today. Fourteenth is the easy par five, 513 yards, the spectacles. You can see those two bunkers just 40 or 50 yards short of the green, known as the spectacles. Fifteenth starts the really difficult finish. Probably slightly easier today. When it's been really fiery on the first day, it's a very hard fairway to find. Possibly difficult short par four or actually it's a par three 248 yards the 16th the 17th called the island and that's the bit you're trying to find the island between the burn where it swings around where the 17 is on our map that's where you want to be landing it and then typically the hardest hole on the course it was ranked the hardest last time in 2007 and again, you're battling the Barry Burn on more than one occasion. You'd make a marvellous jigsaw of this course if you just went to cut the pieces out for the Barry Burn. <laughs> the speed's really having a go today. Coming back from a one over past 72 yesterday, three yeah, birdies, no drop shots. He's had to work hard Thanks. on a couple of occasions, but successful every time. And he is really a competitor of note. I mean, he just does not let anything stop him trying. But oh boy, he's caught a roofie here. Probably one of the thickest looking patches we've seen, uh, Julian. Yeah, it's not nice, is it? in great shape. Rose should be okay, just depends a bit on the lie there. Long fescue grass can so easily wrap around the hosel of the club. more tenacious after what, probably at least 12 hours of rain. Where is it? Well, they seem to make a pretty decent sound. They've got onto the back of the ball, or right? <laughs> once again an astonishing shot. I mean, really, I mean, you think they're in trouble, and, but if you could hear the sound, the line is obviously a lot better than it looked. Hitting straight back into the sun that's getting lower in the sky. I didn't know where it had gone. You heard him say, where is it? And it's also what little breeze maybe is there was slightly into him from his left, I think. But what a marvellous shot. Oh, a heavier life arose. Well, the end result's not too bad. got that look about him at the moment it was the same watching him in practice he I don't think he's feeling too confident he's not really sure where it's going he's never been the straightest driver has he really is 21 places into the green and virtually right in the middle of it. So a fairly straightforward shot here for Happy Barn, right? Can he just control the speed? Oh, 
it too well. I think he's a little disappointed how that stopped as well. Kevin Kisner, having had birdies at the 13th and 14th, has parred the next three, so he's still eight under playing the last. He made very clean contact on that, got right on the back of it. Talking about Kisner, I did have to see what's that. He left the putt at 16, hanging over the hole. Marvellous shot into the green for the two, just short. And in and out at 17 for the birdie. No. Also from long range. Really? Yeah. Could have opened up some clear water. Kisner and Finna played a practice round together on Tuesday, played against each other in a four ball. And they both went pretty low, actually. They were looking very good. Um, Tony Finna was in exuberant mood, just loving being here and loving life. Not surprised he's doing well. well that's great. Well, now we see a line in the putt. Ever so slight movement from 19 foot from left to right. And he unraveled the line. You need to find a couple of birdies you feel just to feel safe and in the championship. Not many giveaways on this back nine. Yes. <laughs> oh. I, I thought I'd said it when it went in once again, but it's Friday today. I'm allowed to say that. Does the day make a difference? Oh, yes. Followed Appy Barnra quite a lot, both being in the in the commentary box and on course, and I'm not sure I've ever seen him read a putt on his own without help from his caddy. Oof. Good putt. Just didn't go in. If you get nervous about it, I mean, Tony Johnson was a, a really good player. That he, his caddy Philip back up in South Africa read all his putts for him, trusted him implicitly because he could not see he could not see the breaks himself. Uh, well, if you've got a, a great caddy from, in that regard, he really can read the greens. Why not? Mm. Speed? No, it wouldn't be surprised if this one went in either. Big trouble off the 10th tee, works away with the birdie, and we thought in trouble here, and a wonderful pitch from thick grass. He was his birdie chance. And he can read greens. <laughs> the defending champion on the march. Back to Mac Birdies on the way home to get to three under. And he's only three behind because Kevin Kisner, guess what? Double bogey in the 18th. Aye, aye, aye. Zach Johnson and Kevin Kisner lead in the clubhouse at six under. It is a very nasty finish here. 
It is. You want to be going down the 72nd hole with about a six-shot lead. At, at least. <laughs> well, now beat knocked this one in for the par four. But to get back to speed, I don't think I, uh, he holds more 20, 25 footers than anybody I think I've ever seen. That's his thing, isn't it? It's the long putt. I mean, he does tend to miss those short ones sometimes, but putting from between, I don't know, 10 and 30 feet is extraordinary. Rose for his par. It's no good being on or close to the cut mark going into the last three holes. You really do want a cushion. Uh, got a real tough hole coming up to up 12. Normally a par five, but... Uh... Yeah. Oh. Worth another look at this, Hutch. It certainly was. I mean, I thought, you know, up till everything just against him advancing the ball and yet he came up stopped it in a flat all right a little bit of breeze from the left but that's uh, call the cops <laughs> Xander Lombard has just had a birdie three at the seventh to join the leaders mm -hmm. A very ex experienced man in his bag, Alan, who caddied for so long for George Gutier, is looking after Zand, and I think he needed somebody as firm and strong as Alan, and they've formed a good partnership. Looks like a three win. Looks it's like it. Speed. There it is. Trying to take those two bunkers out of play up the right hand side. 280 to reach that. Might be in the left hand rough and can he get away with it again? I mean look at this, I mean that is miles offline. <laughs> that was the way to get round in nineteen ninety nine. If you if you played inside the ropes, you ended up in absolute jungle. But if you were wide enough outside the ropes where it was all trodden down, you had a better chance. Well, also looks like three would you have for Happy. That should be good as gold. <laughs> Nearly 300 to reach those bunkers on the right and uh, whipped it by them there. Gold has taken a bit of a dive recently. Has it really? But yeah. oh, it's all not a bad currency to use. The US dollar is so strong. Lion here. Now this might be one of his. Oh, I don't think it is. I don't think it's even a, a two or a three iron. Put a couple of extra clubs in called UDIs. Uh, as long as they're turning away, that's going to be fine. I was chatting to Lou. He stays it during a practice round. And the two iron I felt would could knock them in those bunkers. I'd rather have it with the driver and knock it well by. Beat last year and that most extraordinary finish. It was amazing. Matt missed a few putts earlier on too, didn't he? But that was the five that Speeds made at the uh, 13th of 13 yeah, was just unbelievable. He had to follow down the hill nearly making a one. doesn't muck about as soon as the green is clear he's going we'll have to see another one of his very good chips he did play beauty at the second earlier today but and did play good, another good one was, where was that at the fourth and then missed the cut looks as if left himself a nice angle at the flag there. Eh? 
my god. Guys, come on. Common sense, please. Thank you. It's very wispy, but... He's getting relief. We've got a rose on the fairway. And this is one of his two ultimate distance irons. Probably the three iron, I would think. Come on, release a bit more. That little under, mind you, the wind is hurting them a little bit, isn't it? Yes, uh, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, ladies and gents, just ask you to step back again, please. He must have been in a rabbit scrape yeah, there, yeah. Much, I think. Yeah. Perfectly still, please, guys. It is. I mean, my play is towards the center of the green at this point, right? Can you guys go back a ways for me? Thank you. Maybe like five Keep yards? Going, Keep going. Thank you. 12 on those. Two <clears throat> cameras and phones yeah. away, please. This is one of the areas where new boys have difficulty and where experience counts for a lot. With all this going on around, you've got cameras in, in all directions and photographers and spectators up close. It takes getting used to. Come on, keep running. That would have made it easily onto the green yesterday, but there's much more give in the fairways now. You don't quite know what he's going to do now. Chippy hold at the third today was absolutely marvellous. I can't help thinking that he might do it again. The run he's on at the moment, starting back 3-3 the way he did the two wild tee shots, is nothing short of amazing. He might putt it from there, Hutch. Well, I'd be even more scared. Is Pat Perez with a birdie four at the 14th is now at six under. There are four of them on that mark. That was a real shame for Kevin Kisner putting together such a good run. As Dennis was saying, chances to birdie the 16th and the 17th and then double bogey in the last. Tony Finner had a birdie at the second and has parred his way since then, going out in 35, one under. Brandon Stone is hanging on in there pretty well. One over for his round with a couple to go. Kershaw going on very steadily today, just one birdie at the par five six, the drop shot immediately at the seventh, the rest of pars. You mentioned Sean Crocker as well, he started with the bogey, has now had his second birdie at the sixth to be one under. And I would have to double check it, but he must be playing in his first open, I'm sure. Now representing America, but born in Zimbabwe. Son of a Zimbabwean quick cricketer. Mm, Crocker. Right, let's see what Abby Barnett can do. Longest chip here, remember the hole is back left. He's sort of front right in a little bit of light rough. So it's 
quite a long way to go. But the aerial route, come back, not quite. You're becoming a, a bit of a mystic, you know, that and the predictor of things. Look what he's got in his hands. I've got a very reliable crystal ball. <laughs> you must have. You tip the chip, now you tip the putter. Place it down there. Now the 12th the hole is 70 paces from the front edge. Just five from the left edge. And he is a good, I would say, eight, nine paces short of the green. So a long old way to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Even more. It is Sean Crocker's first Open, by the way. He qualified via the Singapore Open, which was one of the Open qualifying series tournaments. His father was a Zimbabwean cricketer and a farmer there, and when farmers ran into trouble in Zimbabwe, when the young lad was at age about five or six, they hightailed it to America. Great period. Anyway, Jordan Speed down with his long, long one for a birdie three. If it goes in, we'll all be stunned, but not surprised. Beautiful speed, not quite the line. Justin Rose also putting from a long way away. An even better touch. It's extraordinary that that first open as a 17 year old at Birkdale is still his best result. It's astonishing. I seem to remember you finished with the chip in too, didn't you, at the last? That's right, yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, more of a pitch, really, haven't it? From some way out. And over the bunkers. And they're up short left, I think. That's right. Yeah, yeah. The bunkers, yeah. Yeah. He'd had a whale of a time, too. And you can imagine a 17 year old amateur from England wandering around there doing well. He, j he couldn't keep the smile off his face. Go on, Epi. Can he find a putt from somewhere? Himself a situation he really doesn't want to be much more than one over, two over probably will make it, but it's dodgy. He's got a chance if he's hit it, if he'd hit it, if he'd hit it. Coming ever so slightly downhill there, but I've seen a lot of putts left short. I think worse when you've found the line, you don't reach the hole. I think it can't go to one over much, I don't think. I don't think so. No, it's mm -hmm. it, there are. 69 players on plus three, so it's gone to plus three now. But at this very moment, that would mean 83 players making the cut, but there's still a long way to go. Last man don't tee off till about quarter past four, so play well, probably nine o'clock at least. 
before it's finished. Ages and years. We've seen the speed to second of Nicholas and uh, slightly ahead of Tiger. This for a far four at 12 for speed, but his favourite Nick. Right in the middle. Excellent card. The mistake found the bunker at the make each birdie at the par five sixth, finding the bunker off the tee. That's all four under par for the day. And he had it going very well yesterday too and lost a few shots coming home. Ken Rose follow him in here for his par. Saw him do it again there that just tucking his shirt under his left armpit. I don't think that's not so much a, a that's not a swing trigger as a, as a specific thought. I think to try and keep the left arm in, keep everything connected. But there are other players who, like for instance, do you remember Louis Oosthuizen at the Open in 210 at St Andrews when he won? He had that little red dot on his glove, which he looked at before stepping into every shot, and it was obviously just a key of thought. Daniels does it by closing the velcro flap on his glove and he's done that for many a long time well, 13th beautiful par three ever so slightly downhill and uh, playing today at 174 yards and the hole cut towards the back of the green 28 paces in and eight from the right just past that bunker you could see that guards the middle right of the green and look at that heart shaped bunker there in the front but it's no heart when you get it there. I don't know for how long he did it in his career, but certainly at one point Greg Norman used to visualise flushing a lavatory as he was stepping in to hit his shot. Just flushing away all the, the rubbish. Get rid of any bad thoughts, clear your mind. Well, that's the idea if you can. That's one the swing thought. I think you've got to probably have one thought at bank. Uh, it's marvellous if you can get all the thoughts that scramble your brain at times out of your head. For most people, there are some who, who need thoughts to play with. I mean, Nick Fowler was certainly one. He would have maybe three or four swing thoughts. David Howell's another. He reckons he can play with four swing thoughts. Hey, he's only in a Thinking going back, you can't get your thinking to come in the, in the true swing. If you've got swing, if you've got thoughts, it better be in the through swing, I think. Anyway, this game is too, it's meant to be simple. Thompson said it's just a stick and a ball hit it. It's sad if you lost Peter a few weeks back. Five-time Open champion. And a master at bumping the ball around courses like this. Sit down, ball. Get on the ground. It did. Good shot. That's certainly the safer place to be. Take those nasty bunkers out of play. Go a little bit long. Justin. Could be as little as an eight iron. Well, there is a bit of breeze helping, isn't there? So he, he may go for an eight. Got it very well teed up. Get lucky. Get lucky.
not very happy with that. Well, he's got 40. He could probably bunt it past the edge of the bunker then. Play a little rust the edge of the bunker then. Play a little run up. Is that his new nickname, do you think? Uh, happy. Not, yes. not, no, not very. <laughs> not very, you're qualified. It's always disconcerting when you get that hysterical laughter from a golf pro. He's just had a really rubbish shot. Been out there for over three hours already, and they've got six holes left to play, which is probably another hour and a half at best. They've got nothing to complain about, they've got the best weather of the day. Last five open champions Zach Johnson significantly in St Andrews. Three years ago, he's right up there again. Rory McElroy, the run at Hoylake in 2014, also right up there. Jordan Spieth giving a very good impression of a successful defending champion. Long way to go. is probably Jordan Spieth's favourite range for a putt. Judging from the way that flag is reacting, it's quite a gusty breeze that's blowing. That always makes life more difficult. Very significant, though. The locals would consider this a zephyr. Now, this is awkward. Is he going to dare to flirt with the edge of the bunker or accept that he's going to miss the flag somewhere right or try throwing it up in the air? Once he could pump and run, I've learned the bug is in his way. Well, it would be very interesting to see what, what he chooses to do. See, he's just far enough that the bunker is not going to disturb it. It's not a very tricky little shot. Well, he's got to take it pretty close to the edge of the bunker, actually, I think, if he wants to get it close. back foot behind his right shoe which creates the angle but he has not hit it quite hard enough. Happy in trouble. It was a bit unlucky. He wasn't going to get there anyway but catching the sprinkler head certainly didn't help. Rose crouching down low, low hands. Oh, what a great shot. What a great shot. They are so good. Just to get it out of the bike, standing as he was right up against the face, and then just take on the shot to pitch out, so he just dribbles down the hill. I mean, really, probably got a slightly better stance than I thought, but nevertheless, beautifully played. Face wide open. Left wrist cupped almost. Just to increase the loft and up she comes. The Mosey only catching up to the shaft now. Oh. The ball I'm talking about in the sand. Well done.
be surprising if Spieth doesn't go close with this birdie attempt to get within two of the lead. He would have seen a leaderboard there as well. So he knows what kids did it and did it the last. What do you think? A little from the left? knew almost immediately he struck it, he got it wrong. I wonder, you know, he's so good at that sort of putt because really you're not expecting to get it, but you, so you make a freer stroke. When you get close to the hole, you know you should get it in and you can tighten up slightly. And I think, because his long putting is absolutely astonishing. Well, those that knew him in, in college days even said that he was suspect then on the short putts. All right, this will take some making. For the par of the day if he holds this one. Now, make sure of the four. Great effort. Oh. Was a beautifully played bunker shot by Justin Rose, but he's still got a nine or ten footer for his par. He's in a spot of bother now. Mm. Hasn't made a birdie today. Three bogeys. Four over. He is going to an easy par five, so you would really hope to make birdie there. In fact, there have been a lot of eagles on the 14th today. He needs one. Well, look this one in. A few more on red. The sort of left of centre will do it. Comes the other way from as he came down, so it's a really nasty putt to have. Well done. Beautiful par five, the 14th. Playing at 493 yards a day, so bunkers had to be avoided. 272, 289 in the left, but the fairway slopes are a bit easy to get in that bush on the right in the spectacle bunkers. Famous bunkers, not too far short of the green. And the hole today is right in the front of the green. Only seven paces in and six from the right edge. I think rather a tough spot. And this is the double green, isn't it? The 14th with the uh, fourth. The whole sort of dog legs a little right to left. You might think it would be hard to get to much, but there have been nine eagles and 74 birdies. Yeah, I know, it's amazing. Easiest hole on the course. But then it's probably coming in a little. Well, it's not a long par five at all. I mean, the the twelfth hole, Don nearly played longer, didn't it? But I did. In fact, today, eight yards longer. So the wind possibly helping just a touch and from his right. Three wood. Just try and 
draw it off the right hand bunker. Cameraman in the plane is unbelievable. Look at that following the ball. Absolutely perfect. Superb drive. Wild one at 10, wild one at 11, wild one at 12. Now absolutely perfect down the difficult tee shot at 14. Just in game with the driver. I think he needs to be on the TV tower. Didn't have bad luck, you wouldn't have any at all. Having a rotten time. Not so happy, Barnra. Also with the driver. Get lucky. I think he has. It's been such a hot, dry summer for an extended period leading up to the championship that you can get away with an awful lot missing the fairways this year. <coughs> Sander Lombard onto the back nine, sharing the lead. Very exciting for the young man who only a few short months ago looked as though he was in real trouble. It really looked as though he had the putting yips. He let himself go a little bit. I think physically he's got very large and a bit bulky and stiff. All did not seem well in the Lombard camp. Back on the straight and narrow now, there. Good and very interesting names. Not very far away from the top. Adam Scott, Brooks, Kepka. There's Sean Crocker at one under. Francesco Molinari level par with. Jason Day, Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, a good 69 today. A good 68 there from Sean Norris, who's uh, going to come back from 74. So uh, they had even par with Mickelson to go. The U.S. is going along nicely today, just birdied the 11th. There's not very many players on. Par, just 10 players on level par. 15 on plus one at the moment. Gary Woodland has bogeyed the 16th and 17th to slip back to one over. Yeah, that's the Sharma there at 71 today, plus two, so. Wonder if the Joe Big Open early and another one in the Far East later on in the year. And Bernard Langer is still there at one over. He's just birded the 14th to get back to one over. Paul Casey, couple over, a man with Ryder Cup here. aspirations. He'd love to be playing here at the weekend and put in a good performance. He's just had a birdie at the 11th to get it to two over. These men very unlikely to be playing at the weekend. It's, it's not impossible, but it's pretty unlikely. I think it goes to four over. Justin Rose finding the bunker has already knocked it out. It's 
barely a par five, really, when you've got 180, 170 yards left for your second shot. There are times, though, when it can be very intimidating when the wind blows. I mean, those spectacle bunkers have not been in play at all so far this week, but they often are, especially when you get a, an easterly wind blowing, playing into a strong wind. Possibly stay. <laughs> well, he's a lucky boy because that is a deep bunker. Now, Speed really can attack this flag 170 yards to the front edge. I think from this range, he can be looking to land it on the green and get it to stop. Nearly hit the flag. That's right in his ballpark. Oh, wonderful shot. Reminds me of you, Hutch, for that bowed left wrist. Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> Maybe 50 years ago. It's a great ability to be able to keep yourself going when you're hitting it all over the place and sort of getting it turned a couple of really poor tee shots into birdies, another one to a good solid par. And it's a perfect shot drive and now a wonderful second setting up an eagle opportunity. All of a sudden he's got the back nine by the throat. He did start to go from the fifteenth yes, they dropped a shot at fifteen, didn't he? And he had a few shots go over the final Correct. four. There was quite a good Spaniard who used to do that. <laughs> Rose's third shot. Should be able to get plenty of spin off this lie. semi-blind that shot really for Justin very difficult to get the right leg he won't but be too excited about the end result though no he won't but maybe a little long one yes yeah, Spieth double bogeyed the next hole yesterday 15th and then dropped shots to the 16th and 18th as well Something special here. Go on. Go on. Well done.
studying the green book in some detail. Had a good look at that uh, fancy putting book, but it looks like it's not easy to read at all. I mean, there are all sorts of twirls and what have you. Absolute nightmare. How you need a master's in what do you call that? I can't think of what they call them. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly geography or something. Ordnance survey. find the title. Nice swing in the putter, go on, look for the home coming up just to, oh, they never go in when you leave them short. I found a way to silence Hutch. Just shown him the green book. It's like a map of your body and show you where all the blood goes. I mean, I don't know how the devil do you work that out. You'll have to give me a lesson. I, I mean, it's impossible to count, but I would, there must be 5,000 little arrows on that, that one green. Oh, that's a <coughs> There's a way to find it, this man will. For the Eagle 3, no surprise. Oh, it is a surprise. I thought that was another inch of speed, and that was right in the middle. So, a good birdie, and Sir Birdie on the way home in five holes. Good play. Yeah, he's disappointed, though. Birdie all over the place and walks away with the birdie ball. That was the worst he could afford to be, though, with this finishing stretch. Right on the cut mark. It really does put beautifully into that oh. left wrist. The forward press and bang, the left wrist takes the blow. That really is a very good looking asset. That's the 15th, that one caused a lot of trouble. You can see the bunkers on the right, that one there at 277 caught out. Jordan Speed, yes, sir. this fairway slopes severely from left to right. The whole dog legs ever so slightly. Right to left is the player's play. There's a couple of bunkers well short of the green, and there's a nasty one just front right. So the big job here is to get the tee shot on the fairway, which is not a very easy thing to do. And it's a good healthy length of 479 today. There we go, slope it so hard, you've almost got to try and draw it into the slope to keep it on the fairway. Just having a look at this hutch, you know, it's not impossible that the cut could go to four over because it's such a difficult finish. Could well do. I mean, that <laughs> there are 68 players now, yeah. 68 and ties on yeah, it three over, so it's definitely going to be at least three over. There are 81 on three over, not impossible, it could go to four. Yeah, well. Let's see how he plays these final four holes. He said you dropped three shots coming in. Or was it four shots coming in yesterday? It was four, four shots, run, yeah. Four shots, yeah. A double and two bogeys. Yeah. So let's see what his mind will let him do today. Uh, 
77 yards at the bunker that caught him out yesterday. Looks at me aiming well left. That's got to be the quickest waggle since Nick Price. He's hooking it into the slope, and that is really the right way to go about it. Got to turn it up a little too high. Finish it's in the road, right, but it should be okay. He's got left of the ridge, isn't he? I never really saw. That's the trouble. There's quite a ridge up the left-hand side there, and if you get the wrong side of that, you end up in goodness knows what sort of trouble. Left of the ridge too. Oh, oh. Justin, it is a desperately difficult tee shot. Three wood here for Justin Rose. You really do need to. Shake this right to left. Just start it on those two bunkers in the distance and draw it off those. Exactly there. Draw. Is it drawing enough? No. He's been unerringly accurate in finding bunkers or something. There's miles of grass on which to land find a tiny patch of sand. It has me offering up my soul if only it'll find a hole. That's <laughs> Beath getting it to four under, but he's got his work cut out now. Group behind John Rahm is struggling. He went out in 41. He finished the front line seven, four, six, triple bogey, bogey, double bogey. He's had another drop shot at the 12th. Start of the day, two under is now four over. We were talking much earlier on today about Jack Nicholas's extraordinary record 19 times he finished runner-up in major championships between 1960 and 1983 11 times for Mickelson I think six of those in the US Open the only one that he hasn't won with Sam Snead a bit, Hutch? I did, luckily. And yeah, he was quite old when I played. I'd watched him play in South Africa a long time ago, and uh, lucky enough, I played on the senior tour with him a little. The oiliest of swings. Oh, fantastic. And I must admit, his book when I was growing up as a boy was the one I looked at and tried to learn from. Wonderful book it was. But what a player. I mean, played with him in Denver one year. And he was moaning a bit, going out, missed every putt like uh, our boy has done here, McElroy. And uh, I, I, I don't think I'll play next week. And then came back in 31. I think he was 69 or 70 at the time. I said, it's a shame you're not going to play next week, Mr. Steve. No, well, I think I will. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah. But what a player. And Bobby Locke gave him such a spanking in their series of exhibitions in South Africa way back in 1947. He used to call Bobby Old Muffin Face, and uh, it was very amusing when you got Sam talking about his adventures with Bobby. It's nice to have you alongside me when I talk about Bobby, because I know you were a bit of a fan too, Warren. Yeah, I loved uh, watching Bobby Locke, and also had the opportunity of playing with Sam Sneed. Rose there playing out of the bunker on the 14th. Sneak came across once and played on a European tour event back in the 70s at Fulford. I was lucky enough to draw him. 
to you. I remember it well. Baker won, but Baker won a tournament there, and I managed to drop the ball unplayable on the 18th hole. Had to leave some from, you know, greenkeeper's rubble. And Commander Rose said, you may drop, so dropped over my shoulder, took a bounce underneath the Christhorn hedge, but still, he said, you could now drop for a shot. <laughs> drop that playable shoot, Bob. Well, it's turning out a lovely evening weather-wise. Not so sure it's turning out a lovely evening for Justin Rose. Good to be here for the weekend. Amazing the difference in the... Yeah, 15 would be left turn. Well, the but two it's, players that's in between all the bunkers, right? Yes, that'd be the left. That'd be your max left. I'd say. Okay. It's almost as if Justin Rose has been more accurate, but found bunkers. And this fellow's been pretty wild, you've got to say. He's hardly seen a fairway, and yet he's been able to get it round and get it on the green from some of the places he's hit. You could say at times this game is unfair. Uh, yes, without question. You don't always get what you deserve, that is a certainty. And once again, another dramatic, look at it, hit the fin problem, no? But it is astonishing, it goes in anywhere and with great assurance, it's astonishing. You'd think he'd get nervous being in the, in the rubbish all the time, but somehow he's not. Somehow gets a lie, I mean, there are open championships that he would have played in. There would be no chance of getting round. But the rough, as you saw there, he was able to get it on the green, but he couldn't hold it. So you do lose out. Don't have the spin control. Let's have a quick word. There's Bones Mackay. This is Phil Mickelson's old caddy, who's uh, working for our colleagues at the Golf Channel. Cleared quite dramatically, quite. Right here with Rose and his caddy of chatting about. Well, now, can Happy do anything here? Von Rat is second at 50. What an amazing game. Very important. Rose now finds a way to, if he can, get up and down in two. Still got 157 to go. Okay, gives himself a chance. Last time he missed the cut, strange enough, was at 2013. It was at Muirfield where, again, the conditions were rock hard underneath. Very fast and fiery. 75 77, Justin had that occasion. Well, Nicholson had that astonishing final round in mean, those conditions. Scary, enormous, unbelievable. Fantastic round. Looks like a big hole <laughs> shown like that. Probably looks like that to speed too.
I know. When he played a, or had a similar shot like this earlier on today, it was at the third. Off a down slope. Again, had to go across a little mound. And he thought, oh, he's going to struggle to get this one up and down in two. Well, he did struggle to get up and down in two because it took him only a single shot. Chipped it in. And this is the shot. You can see how similar it is. Off a down slope, stunned it into the bank. Had a little skid on it, and well, there we are. First birdie of the day. At least Devon Winner's feet was lying first. Into the final round, he's opted the putter here, which is his favourite weapon. Unfortunately, my crystal ball isn't quite as good as Julian's. Uh, it was amazing. It, it has been very good today, has Jules. But and I say four after the horrible double bogey he took here yesterday, so we're just wondering how he's going to handle. And look how smooth the ball. You can see how the ball takes off in the end. It, really, where you really find out it does that is when you put on sand greens. Have you ever put it on sand greens, Warren? Only the once. Only the once, yeah. And I bet you made every putt you said so. <laughs> but it takes off at about a foot in the air and then starts to run. And that's exactly what the quicker you get the ball on the ground, the better chance you have of holding your line. Actually if you strike it right up the back of the ball, it doesn't bounce too much. <laughs> well not on this but it's sand it does, you've got to give it a smack. <laughs> ah, you're right. A long, long putt for a birdie three, but he's fortunate to have the putt after the wild tee shot. Good recovery from where he was, and he could use one. You'd go on. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, a pretty important putt here for Justin. They're all important. He'll go about it the same way he's gone about all the others. He won't put any more pressure on himself. Just try and do the best he can at his end. Strike it on the line he wants to. Let's hope he gets one going here. And, oh, that is brilliant. He's not going to give up easily, Justin Rose. Three tough holes to go, but that might just lift his spirits, get the crowd on his side. Who knows? As you were saying, now he's barely missed Finn. He's found bunkers every time in terrible trouble when he's got where the other boys have been wilder and found hot, decent lies in the rough and got away with it. And uh, where well, he has paid quite a heavy price. That was a fabulous fall he made there. So keep on fighting. It's the opposite direction of the putt we've just seen. So a little bit on the right for Abby Barnrett. Brave devil. Well done. I can't see the cut going to plus four. Too many players to be bounced out, so. And there we are. And Spieth makes his four there, remains at four under. 
Justin definitely has to find a way to make a birdie over the closing three. Not going to be easy. Mind you, no one said it was going to be easy. Scoring today against the par of 71, 72.83. Yesterday the scoring 73.17 so it's come down a shot even though we have had some pretty bad weather this morning. No, not quite come down a shot has it? It's come down 0.3 third of a shot. Eased up on 16 today, only 237 yards today. The whole of the play, with the whole sort of four paces from the left edge of the green and 22 paces into it. It is a devil of a hole, this one. Well, Spieth so far in his round is bogey free. Only one man in the championship has managed to go bogey free so far over the first two days. That's Tommy Fleetwood, Pat Perez. He's got a chance to be bogey free, just got the 18th to play. Sander Lombard through 11, he's not dropped a shot today. Jordan Spieth hasn't, neither has the Masters champion Patrick Reed. He's making but there's still holes to play. Yeah, he's making a good fight back after a, a week is first round for him. Right, 237 yards as we said, this is probably the breeze, what it is, is still helping here, isn't it, Warren? So, probably five high. Boy, oh boy. Four! I mean, it's not, I mean, it's seriously all flying the way it goes. It's been, this back line has been absolutely amazing. Well, I mean, if you compare the strike in terms of absolute, absolute accuracy compared to Rose, there's no comparison. See the flag there. It's actually, I suppose, the wind is a little bit more right to left to give Smith the benefit of the doubt, playing for the draw. That's started down the right side, and well, there's a bunker for that one. That would have found the front right bunker. Might just just have got in there. Two pars that would open here would take some doing. Nice and bright, please, folks. Thank you. Thank you. What would he give for his finish of yesterday, Justin Rose? 3-4-3 three, three he finished for a round of 72. Hold in line and go. Good go off to green nose, get up there and stop. What a fantastic stop. Quite the best I've seen here today. Compare that to the shot of Spieth. Spieth is five under par for his round. Rose is three over, eight shots difference. But in a way, that's how they've played. Rose has had control of the ball and has paid the price for it at times. Four. That is so as wide of the, of the spectator walkway. It's on a par three. Stop <laughs> issue. Well, we know what he did last year in the championship when he won on the 13th hole. I mean, to to miss the sand dunes away to the right of the 13th. I mean, he was 60 yards right of the centre of the fairway and in the end ended up about 80 yards right because had to take the unplayable and drop down the practice ground. But wow, 
that would be great as five, bogey five. Probably ever then nearly hold it down the hill at the next hole, the par three, 13, or 14. It used to be 13 in the old days. And made the two, and then the eagle, then the birdie at 15. You just knew. I mean, it was just amazing. Another birdie at 17. Astonishing. Five under par for the next few holes. And uh, tore the championship out of Kusha's grasp. Yes, had to feel a certain level of sympathy for Matt Kucha. But you had to admire the brave recovery of Spieth. Confirmation of the top of the leaderboard there. Four players at six under. McElroy nicely tucked in just to cover back. See the ball in the bunker there, that's Appy Barnrat. Well, he's 30 yards right of where Appy Barnrat is, and Appy Barnrat's missed the green wide. And you wouldn't bet against him making three, though. No. Mind you, he's got to play a really good shot here, because the pin is just, just above that little plateau, so anything a little bit left of the flag, very easy to go down onto the lower level the green's not that wide so if he does pitch it up on top gets a little bit of a firm bounce going a bit low he could be in the hollow long oh, no look it's it's not easy i'm just saying but the way he's going he'll probably back into make uh-oh not this time and now he's really in trouble the last few holes found him out last night well, that's the only one I didn't figure into the equation. I didn't think he would play it like that. I actually thought he would throw it up onto the green somehow, but he was obviously just trying to drop it over there and run it up the slope. Now he's facing double. That's the hands leading to try and play the low tracing shot, make sure that Hands always stay ahead. It slightly de-lofts the face of the club when you do that. You can see how still he kept his head and how long he wants the ball. Come on, Abby. You can see a good bunker shot from here. Well, well, well. <laughs> Super shot. Masterly, that one. Difficult shots he's faced over the two days of the championship. Now here with very awkward starts. It looked like there was a fairly thick grass there. And he's got to give it a whack to get it out of there. It'll do. I don't know, this will take some wizardry to get this up and down. Standing very wide for this shot. Why did we doubt it for a second? Yep. We played it so quickly, we never even got a good look at it. I mean, it's an astonishing effort to get. I must have used that word a hundred times today. And he just chopped it in front of him. But to gauge the amount of roll, that's the imagination you've got to have, which is certainly very special. You don't need to hold it, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right, I, I honestly would love to see this guy in for the two because a beautiful striker, a wonderful shot. He did make a good putt for his par in the last hole after driving to a bunker. Let's see if he can follow it with another one. Well, there have been seven birdies on this hole so far today. 
Would love to make this the eighth. I don't think there's a lot of movement. Oh, yeah, that's what I was worried he was going to miss. He deserved a two. But a three's good anyhow. Yeah, that may just not be good enough, though. Now he's got a birdie either. 17 or 18, not a red figure on the card so far today for him. Never know. Got to hope that it's a bit like waiting for a bus. And you get one, you might get another. If you can birdie 17, you never know, you might birdie 18 as well. This would be for a, an excellent sand save for Happy Barnard. He doesn't want to go to four over either. Yes, good work, really good work. saying not many people have got uh, around the course today bogey free it's not going to be a bogey free round for Spieth already taken three so that's the first bogey today of the round slips back to three under but again what a bogey what a bogey really hard working Four. 